Today we're going to talk about three stressors in an informatic specialist life. Hey you guys, this is Jen from Informatics Life where I give you weekly insight on healthcare and technology. Okay, so some of you might be thinking, oh, if I get into informatics, it's gonna be stress-free. <sighs> okay, so, I always call it a different form of stress. It's not my patient might code on me. <laughs> None of that. It's not like my patient wants double dose of pain meds, I can't give it to them. Or it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm running behind on all of my medications and I'm so behind, I'm gonna have to work late tonight. None of that. But there's stressors, of course. What job do you know that does not have stressors? I want that job right there. <laughs> Okay, now, so as you know, if you read a little bit about my bio, I am a management over a large system, so I do have a lot more stressors than the average analyst. So I'm going to put my management position to the side to talk to the majority out there, analyst specialists, because they do have stressors. I totally understand I was there. So I can definitely talk about first-hand experience on stressors out there in the informatics life. Whether you are an informatics nurse specialist or an informatics health specialist, stressors are there. One way that there's stressors in the informatics life is meeting deadlines. Yes, you have project management all right, so what do I mean? As an informatics specialist, whether health or nursing, you will be handed a lot of projects to manage, whether it's documentation changes, device integration, maybe major system changes, maybe your system is changing their documentation system. Whatever it is, you have to meet those deadlines. There are deadlines out there that you know, you have to make sure all testing is complete. You have to make sure that, you know, training materials are complete. You have to make sure education is complete. If it's more like a smaller project and you change some documentation in the system, that's going to impact every single nurse out there. We work for a large organization, so our informatics nurse specialists, they have to create education that's going to impact over 10,000 staff. It could. <laughs> so if you understand the weight of your responsibility with that and making sure your education is very clear, making sure that the the new nurse, we always say the grad nurse, you gotta think like a grad nurse, they don't have experience, so you have to break it down to where the new nurse will understand it. You have nurses that come from international, making sure that the English is not too complex for them. So you have all these things that have to be considered when you're trying to meet deadlines and ensuring that your portions, your stakeholding areas have been completed. So definitely will say deadlines can put a lot of pressure on an informatics nurse specialist. All right, so a part of deadlines being met is sometimes project owners are hard to get a hold of. Who can who can be your project owners, first off? Let's talk with that. It could be an executive, all right? Do you know how busy executives are? And it's like, you are seriously like, can you please answer my email? Can you please meet with me? I know you keep canceling. Can you please meet with me? I need to get this deadline. Like, because you need to get signed off for whatever you're doing. So you have to get sign off for designs, okay? Sign off for testing with them, okay? complete sign off to make sure they are 100% satisfied with their design, then education's out, you're done, right? Sometimes, 
Then if you have your system put in place, maybe they have to monitor to make sure that nurses are utilizing their new device or new technology or new documentation. There's follow-up that has to transpire. So your project owner is like your BFF when you're doing project management. And if they're not responding to you, you might not meet your deadline. So that's tied into number one, okay? So <laughs> that's, that can be stressful when you have like a whole room full of other people that need to do their job and they're waiting on you to do your part. <laughs> so definitely can be a stressor. I always tell my staff, just CC me on it. And sometimes you have to make the hard decisions on, hey, sending that last email. I haven't heard back from you in four weeks. I've been I've been communicating with you on a weekly basis. I'm going to have to close out your project. Typically after that email, you magically get an email back. <laughs> but we understand what it's like out there. Now it's not only executives. It could be managers, um, bedside managers. It could be um, other departments, radiology, uh, specialty departments that maybe they just have a liaison that could be bedside nurse that's pushing through the project. So it could be just lack of communication that just puts that stress on you. So when you have to show up at their job, you know where they work. <laughs> like, listen, I really want to help you with your project. Your project is amazing, but I need you to sign off on this because we don't sign off saying that because it's not our design. It is that other person designed. So those are two stressors so far. So number three stressor of many other stressors out there could definitely be your unit saying, we never received that education. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm laughing at that one. Your units are super busy. And a lot of times they will miss your emails, okay? And maybe you rounded it and they weren't there. Or maybe communication didn't get to them, even though you sent it to them. So there is always that stressor of, you know, you have something majorly changing and then it goes live. And the persons or the units and the whomever is like, we did not receive anything from our informatics nurse specialist and you're like I, I I sent 10 emails I rounded 10 times I I I hung my picture saying be ready for this is coming and you're defending yourself you're just like especially when they see see your manager and you're just like listen I, I did everything I was supposed to do that can be pretty stressful if you know what I mean because you know you did the work it's just that the communication just didn't get transmitted to them because they maybe weren't paying attention or maybe they missed it or whatever so I just want to say like those are understandable stressors and that does happen out there very, very, very often, okay? I think it happens often, okay? So I just want to say this. You know what you did. Track all of your emails. Track all communication. Track how often you round it. Track, you know, who you spoke to. That way, if it was something very major, and there was a patient incident or something like that, you wanna have on record everything that you've done, okay? Now you don't have to go in depth and track it so much in detail, but would it hurt? Not really, wouldn't hurt if you could. You know, you could put on your calendar, if you have an Outlook calendar, put it on there saying, hey, I rounded them this day, I spoke to da 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 That way you always have it on your records or just have like a little notebook, notebook log of, you know, who you communicated to. That way, if something ever was to happen, you can have that as your record. So those are three things. I, I still want to laugh, sorry. The last one. <laughs> because I see that all the time, I'm so sorry. And I don't blame our bedside people because they're busy. They're taking care of patients, oh my gosh. And, and they, they, you know, don't pay attention to the details sometimes. And it's understandable, but 
it's always, I just want to put this plug in there too before I sign off. It's good to always have management buy-in because when their manager says, this is coming, be ready, people tend to scurry more and oh, let me look for that email because I want to be ready. My manager says we're ready. You know, I don't want this, you know, you know, they know that, hey, there's a lot more pressure when they have that leadership backing on something going live. So always talk to your educators, your management on the units, however you have to, to make sure your people are engaged with what's coming. Because that, again, is one of those stressors out there. There are other stresses that I will go through in the future, but I thought that those were three top ones that I hear often out there. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you think that, oh, informatics is gonna be so easy. <laughs> Somewhat, but you still have deadlines. You still have, you work with people, lots of people, and you still have communication that has to be met. And I'll do another video, like I said, on best ways to communicate to your staff, okay? Other than that, I hope you learned, you know, and if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe down below. Now, I want to hear from you. Hey, what are your challenges out there? What are topics about the informatics life or questions that you have to an informatics specialist. If it's something that I hear very often, I'll definitely drop a video about it so that you can have it way more in depth. I've been in the field for a very long time. I serve as a senior nurse manager of informatics for a large organization. So I have some knowledge on informatics and I love to share it with people so they can be well informed of this newer field in nursing, which is pretty cool. Don't forget to comment down below. I want to hear from you. Like and subscribe. Don't forget. All right, this is Jen, informatics nurse specialist, signing off.